Hey everyone, so let's do a quick review of demand. I'll start with reviewing the law of demand. The law of demand states that ceteris paribus, which means other things held constant, as price rises, quantity demanded falls. And ceteris paribus, as price falls, quantity demanded rises. Remember, we say quantity demanded has changed whenever there's a change in price. It is incorrect to say a rise in price will cause a fall in demand. That is wrong. Please don't ever say that. It's more accurate to say a rise in price will cause a fall in quantity demanded. So don't confuse the word demand with the word quantity demanded. They do not mean the same thing in economics. So the law of demand is the law that is used to explain movements along the demand curve. A change in price will cause an upward or a downward movement along the demand curve. A change in price will cause a change in quantity demanded. You can see here when price rose from P1 to P2, this led to a fall in quantity from Q1 to Q2. Here, quantity demanded has fallen. This has led to... Um, an upward movement along the demand curve, okay? You have moved from one point to another point. Uh, also, when price falls, say from P2 to P1, this leads to an increase in quantity demanded, not an increase in demand, an increase in quantity demanded from Q2 to Q1, and it leads to a downward movement along the demand curve. You're also expected to understand the difference between uh, individual demand and market demand. So an individual consumer's demand is basically the quantity of a good or service that an individual consumer is willing and able to buy at a certain price over a certain period of time. Market demand, on the other hand, is the quantity of a good or service that all consumers in a given market are willing and able to buy at a certain price over a certain period of time. How do you derive market demand? Well, market demand is derived by horizontal summation of all individual consumer demand curves. You add up the total quantities demanded at each price. What about the non-price determinant of demand? These are the factors that will cause a shift of the demand curve to the right or to the left. We know that a rightward shift represents an increase in demand and a leftward shift represents a decrease in demand. So what are those non-price determinants? The first one is income. If this good is a normal good, if income increases, demand will increase and vice versa. If this good is an inferior good, if income increases, demand will decrease and vice versa. The next non-price determinant is tastes and preferences. If the product becomes more popular or more fashionable, demand will increase and vice versa. If the product becomes less popular or less fashionable, demand will decrease. Um, this highlights the role of positive or negative advertising. Positive advertising will increase demand for a product. Negative advertising will decrease demand for a product. The next non-price determinant is future price expectations. If consumers expect prices to rise, they'll actually buy more now while the price is low, and this will increase demand, the curve will shift to the right. If consumers expect prices to fall, they'll actually buy less now, because why buy now at a higher price when you can buy later when the product is cheaper, and demand will actually decrease. The next non-price determinant is the price of related goods. There are two possible relationships between goods when it comes to demand. Goods could be substitutes or complements. Okay, let's assume the two goods are substitutes. If the price of product B, say product B is a closed substitute, rises, B is now more expensive. So consumers will switch to product A and therefore demand for product A will increase and vice versa. Complements. Say A and B are complements. If the price of product B, which is a closed complement, rises, this complement, these products are consumed together. Um, if the price of product B rises, the demand for product A will decrease and vice versa. The last non-price determinant is the number of consumers in the market. Naturally, 
If the number of consumers in the market increases, demand will increase and vice versa. This could be due to population growth or due to immigration. And there you go, all the non-price determinants that you need to be familiar with. So an increase in demand is represented by a shift to the right from D to D1, as you can see. A decrease in demand is represented by a shift to the left from D to D2. In the IB economic syllabus, you are required to distinguish between a movement along the demand curve and a shift of the demand curve. So this will help you review. Remember, a movement along the demand curve is caused by a change in price, while a shift of the demand curve is caused by a change in a non-price determinant. This is the first point of difference. The second point of difference, a movement along the demand curve is represented by an upward or downward movement from one point on the demand curve to another point on the same demand curve. So you are moving either upward or downward on the same demand curve. All right. While a shift of the demand curve is represented as a shift of the whole demand curve to the right or to the left. To the right is an increase, to the left is a decrease. Also, um, a movement along the demand curve is described as a change, an increase or decrease, in quantity demanded. We say that quantity demanded has increased or decreased. While a, move, a shift sorry, of the demand curve is described as a change, an increase or decrease in demand. And this is the difference between movement along the demand curve and shift of the demand curve. The law of demand is the concept or theory that explains movements along the demand curve, while the non-price determinants of demand is the concept or economic theory that explains shifts of the demand curve. I hope this quick review of demand, the law of demand and the non-price determinants of demand was helpful. Have a good day.